Perfect. Thanks very much, uh, Lisa, and thanks to everyone for coming along today. Um, our presentation is around digital competences, the views in the workplace, based on a small piece of research that myself and Suzanne and our former uh, intern, Laura Ann Scanlon, did as, as part of the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Project at DCU. We have presented some of this work um, already in, in, in other forums, um, and we're presenting it here today to, to a new audience. So we hope you enjoy. Um, many of you will, will 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 have heard about the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning Project already, and, and I know Sharon will be going into, into it in slightly more detail in the in the next presentation. But essentially, it's around building staff capacity around digital education. And at DCU, um, what we tend to do is uh, offer professional development to teams of academics around the topic of assessment. Before COVID, we had some good engagement. Obviously, COVID um, through professional development up in the air, and staff uh, were less inclined. To, to, to come to us for enhancement uh, development where they were looking really much very much to, to stay afloat in the pandemic. Uh, so therefore we pivoted somewhat and, and, and throughout the project then we started focusing directly around uh, supporting student digital skill development. So we've been creating student digital resources. We have been um, um, piloting an initiative called Digitown, a, a kind of a short informal um, digital skills session where students get tips and tricks around using digital tools in college. And we were inspired by a research study conducted in Nottingham around um, the digital competences of graduates. So identifying what digital competences do graduates use in the workplace. And we were interested in that because when we are doing our professional development with our uh, academics and when we're doing our student digital skills initiatives with our students, we want to know kind of specifically what sort of competences are we talking about? Are we talking about word processing? Are we talking about spreadsheets? Are we talking about task management, uh, cloud storage, et cetera? So we wanted more detail essentially. And that led us to conduct our own small piece of research with uh, recent DCU graduates and also with employers and employer bodies to find out the broad non-discipline specific digital skills that um, people are looking for in the workplace, again, to inform our EDTL activities. And we were very thankful to draw on uh, some colleagues in DCU to help us design the survey and crucially to, to reach out to these graduates and these employers who Suzanne and I don't have a direct uh, connection with. Our research methodology was mixed methods, combining quantitative and qualitative data. Our first um, uh, phase was an anonymous online survey, one for the graduates and one for the employers. We based the survey around the DigComp framework. So some of you may have heard of the DigComp EDU framework. This is the DigComp framework for citizens and organizations, which states that there are five competence areas that citizens should be proficient in, as you can see them there, and they should have their, their proficiency should range from foundational to highly specialized. So we grouped questions uh, around those five competences there, uh, information, data literacy, communication, collaboration, digital content creation, safety, and problem solving. Uh, we analyzed it in uh, Excel, and, and uh, most of the survey was Likert scale questions. We analyzed it in Excel. And then for the open-ended questions in the survey, uh, uh, the qualitative data that was coded in in vivo using the Brown and Clark model of thematic analysis. Um, we issued the survey in February 2021, went out to around 9,000 recent graduates, about 600 employers, very low response rate, as you can see on screen there. So, so we're certainly not, 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 not stating our findings as empirical fact, but, but we do think they are illuminative nonetheless. Some possible reasons, obviously, there was no incentive for them to complete the survey. We had no connection with them. Um, we did no follow up with them because, again, we felt we were using the, the, the contacts from uh, our, our, our other units. Um, so we didn't have a direct contact with the survey respondents. And also, I think there was a kind of a, a, a malaise around the country this time last year, if you can recall back then. Um, I won't go into the quantitative data in too much detail because um, I will share the slides with you and you can you can you can look at them in more detail. But overall, if I just skip down to the summary of the quant data um, uh, as a whole, the employers rated some competences um, more important um, uh, uh, than uh, um, the, the graduate respondents did, especially in area four, which is around um, um, uh, health and safety. Uh, again, employers have certain uh, obligations to ensure their employees are safe online, so they may be more aware of the competences required in that area than graduates would be. Um, in area two, which is communication and collaboration, both the graduates and the um, 
employers expressed kind of the same level of importance for those competences. And again, that's possibly due to COVID, remote working, we're all relying much more on digital comms and digital collaboration to keep going. So that could be why that area was seen as equally important. Um, except interestingly, um, um, employer respondents thought that netiquette and managing digital identity was more important than our graduate respondents did. That was a, an interesting highlight there. Um, again, in, in, in area three, they roughly expressed the same level of importance and um, uh, the, in, in the area of troubleshooting and identifying one's skills to be developed, uh, the employers thought that that was slightly more important compared to uh, the graduates. Um, so I'll stop sharing there and I'll hand over to Suzanne, who's going to take you through some of the qualitative findings. Sorry, I was on mute. I can't believe I did that. Um, OK, uh, so in terms of the qualitative data, I'm again, uh, like Rob, just going to give you a summary of the, the data um, here. So four kind of points that we'd like to highlight to you. Um, uh, so firstly, the obviously, given the timing of the survey, the impact of COVID came through in the data. Uh, presentation skills came up um, uh, quite a number of times throughout the data. Uh, Excel skills and marketing and social media, but not uh, solely for those in marketing and social media kind of areas of work, but across the board. Uh, so just in terms of the COVID impact, then obviously video com conferencing was already in use pre pandemic. But one interesting point that that was raised in the data was that troubleshooting of um, IT, IT issues was a skill that graduates needed to uh, have during the pandemic. And I guess that's related to uh, maybe a more limited access to IT uh, support structures during that time. Uh, employers also highlighted that remote working skills are a new kind of essential skill uh, in that context. Excel came up repeatedly throughout the data, 25 mentions. As Rob mentioned already, this was a very small scale survey, but it, 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 is, um, it is interesting from our perspective to, to get some insight into, into what graduates are using in, in, in the workplace. Um, and from the graduate perspective, uh, the range of skills that were mentioned relating to Excel Excel, Excel range from basic to advanced, but employers uh, use the term excellent level of skills uh, as the requirement, as the required level. Um, an interesting comment that we just pulled out um, from the, the graduate data, you know, that they were actually surprised. It's weirdly more common uh, than I thought it would be. Um, that they were surprised how often Excel is, is required in the workplace. So uh, very interesting from our perspective as well in, in terms of developing um, skills uh, in the university context. So yeah, okay, so you can have a look at those slides in uh, more detail in your own time. We'll share the slides with you after this session. Again, presentations coming up all the time, a variety of um, purposes for the presentations, finance, uh, pie charts, you'll see uh, finance again coming up there, but PowerPoint mentioned quite, quite a lot of uh, times throughout the data. Uh, a limitation of the research then, we didn't explore the, the nuance or, or make that um, very clear in our kind of question, the nuance between creating presentations and delivering presentations digitally. So that, uh, that will be something to, to follow up on later if we get the opportunity. Uh, and then we felt that this was very interesting uh, comment from uh, one of our employer respondents that comms and marketing is something that is it happens increasingly horizontally. You know, every staff member is involved, not just specific individuals, you know, social media is used all of the time. And that was from, um, you know, the, I guess that's interesting in terms of, of developing skills and, and kind of guiding the work that we um, plan to do with students. Uh, in terms of our digital skills kind of projects. Uh, I think that was Lisa giving me a, a, a two minute warning there. Sorry, the, the audio was a bit um, uh, crackly there, but yes, I think so. Uh, and then just another interesting comment from the data that there is an awareness amongst graduates that uh, when they go into the workplace that often they are called upon to, um, to kind of support older or more um, a different generation, as they very diplomatically put it here in this comment, that you know management are not often as technology technologically able, um, and may need some help with technology. So that's an, another interesting point from the data. 
what I found was really interesting was there's very little explicit mention of artificial intelligence, only one mention. Uh, and, and a second one, machine learning was the term they used, but uh, I would have expected more um, more mention of, of that specifically uh, throughout the data, but it did not happen. Then in terms of applying the learning, as Rob mentioned already, uh, we have turned our focus towards student skills development, just I guess because um, staff have been, you know, up to 90 um, with professional learning in terms of remote learning and then the, the kind of moving between um, between um, uh, being on campus and then back to remote learning again. So we focus a little bit on student skills development. We have a, our, an initiative called Digitown. Uh, in, interestingly, uh, from our perspective, we've struggled to get students to engage or, or large numbers to engage with us, despite the evidence suggesting that, you know, skills are required. Uh, so we, we're kind of going to reflect on, on how to uh, engage students um, uh, more in the coming semester. And we've also uh, developed a digital skills hub, which is a collection of resources that students can draw on in their own time. In terms of staff professional development, then it's just reinforced for us the importance of digital assessments as an opportunity to support digital skills developments. And, and we're hoping to focus uh, uh, on that um, into, the, into the next semester. Uh, Lisa, I'm a little bit over time, so I'll, I'll stop there. But if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, we'd welcome those. And you can reach out to myself and Rob at, at um, the email addresses below. Thanks very much. It's great. Thanks so much, Rob and Suzanne, for that. Are there any questions on that? We have two minutes for questions. Don't be shy. I have a, a one quick question just uh, for those that aren't familiar with Digitown. Might you just give a, a two minute explanation what that might be? OK, so Digitown was um, uh, what we did was initially uh, during I suppose last year, we wanted to create a kind of a more social and informal space for students to develop digital skills. And we used a platform many of you will be familiar with uh, called GatherTown. And we just invited students to come along. We kind of uh, introduced a, a fun aspect with raffles and uh, kind of a gamified um, uh, experience, uh, but the focus was on digital skills. So developing, you know, just short presentations and, and kind of conversations around digital skills.